Hey everybody, welcome back to Legit Street Cars. My name is Alex and in today's video, I'm gonna show you a one penny hack that got me back something that we all desire, something that we can't live without, something that puts a big smile on all of our faces and that is Boost. But first, we have to fix something. <laughs> we really have to fix something before we put any power through this engine at all. Ew. All right guys, we are getting right into the repairs on the CDI, that way we can move on to modifications as quick as humanly possible. And if you guys saw the last video on this car, then you know that apparently this engine hates its life and is trying to escape by way of breaking the driver's side engine mount. Now, as you can see, I've already taken both of these engine mounts out. These are just about the easiest engine mounts to replace on any Mercedes Benz. And I'll link a complete engine mount replacement video that I made on my C55 down below. But all you need to know for this CDI is to remove the two bolts right there for the trans mount, jack up the engine using a block of wood, and then get yourself the $20 Miracle Motor Mount Tool. And I'll link this down below, but what that does is it allows you to get to the top bolts, uh, which are right on the other side of that, uh, in short order, you'll get them out in a couple minutes instead of struggling with a wrench forever. And then of course, all you have on these cars is just a 13 millimeter bolt on the bottom. And then with the engine jacked up, as you can see here, you can just take the motor mounts out the backside without removing anything else. They're very easy. You can get this job done in about an hour. Now, this is the bad mount. This is the driver's side mount. The passenger side is actually okay, but we're gonna replace it anyway. This is about as bad as it gets, guys. I've never seen one actually completely break off like this, but uh, yeah, these things are filled with hydraulic fluid. As you can see, they kind of make a mess, especially when you spill them out all over the floor on purpose. <laughs> uh, up next, what we have to do, again, if you guys saw that video, is we have to fix, we have to replace the control arm bushing on the passenger side. Uh, this thing is just completely shifted over to one side, and what's gonna make this job so much easier is this tool right here. And again, I will link the tool and a complete video that I made on using this tool down below, but basically the theory here is very simple. We're gonna use this cup that's specifically meant for this bushing, and they give you a bunch of these, and we're gonna press out the bushing this way, and then we're gonna press in the new bushing, uh, and that's it, and we're gonna make sure that it is centered this time so it looks just like the driver's side. Now, of course, I got all the parts uh, for all of this stuff and a bunch more parts that we're gonna be replacing in future episodes from FCP Euro. They have a lifetime warranty on literally everything they sell. And if you guys know Mercedes-Benz, you know that you're gonna be replacing these mounts probably every two, three, four years. So buy it once and you're done. And that includes everything from them. So. I always enjoy getting FCP Euro boxes. That one has a bunch more stuff as well. <laughs> but in this video, we are gonna be doing these engine mounts. I'm gonna be doing that control arm bushing, and then we're gonna be moving on to a one penny resistor hack that totally restored all of my boost. And I'm also gonna show you uh, what I thought to be a receipt for a new turbo that I found in the car. It was an emotional roller coaster ride. I thought this thing had a new turbo. Then I realized that maybe it was an estimate for a turbo, it's, it's a mess, I'll explain in a minute, but let me get this work done, and then I'll show you that receipt. All right, we have fresh motor mounts installed on the CDI. I also did the transmission mount just for good measure, and I cannot wait to drive this thing. It is gonna be smooth as glass, and it's also not gonna jerk me all over the road because now we have a properly installed control arm bushing. Now, I will need an alignment. There's an adjustment you can make with this bolt, but this is gonna drive a million times better. So check this out. This is what I thought was a receipt for a brand new turbo. I got this car at midnight off the truck. I found this right next to the bill of sale immediately, and I looked at my friend and I said, sweet, this guy just spent $2,100. I saw the word turbo a million times and that's as far as I went. Then we drove the car and it drove like this. Floored all the way. That's all she's got, no boost. This is probably less than 100 horsepower. It's, it's horrible. And driving around with no boost is no fun. So then I thought, oh man, this is probably an estimate for a new turbo and that's why this guy sold the car so cheap. Then I simply just folded the piece of paper over a little bit more and I found 
that this is a core check-in sheet. So apparently this guy sells broken cars and sells auto parts. After restoring the nasty headlights on the CDI in the last video, some of you guys had mentioned that the cowl was looking pretty gross and pretty grimy, and I definitely agreed. So I sucked out about five pounds of dirt, debris, and leaves from the cowl. Then I removed all of the engine bolt covers and the engine covers to reveal this, our wonderful naked CDI engine. So let's get right into the resistor mod hack, the hack that cost me about one penny and restored all of my boost, or so I think. We're gonna go for a boosted test drive here in a moment with the scanner logging so we can make sure that this engine is producing its full boost like it's supposed to right from the factory. So all you need here are some resistors. You just need a 4.7K ohm resistor. I bought a whole bunch of these from Radio Shack right before they shut down, but these are dirt cheap. They're probably a penny or two each. Uh, so all you need is one of them, and then you need to get to the M55 inlet motor connector. Now I'm gonna go over what the M55 inlet motor is, uh, the system that it controls, why I don't think you need it, and all the problems that it can cause. I'm gonna go over that during our test drive, but to do this hack, all you need to know is this. You need to get to the connector to that motor. You can kind of pop it out with a screwdriver through here, and you can't see this motor, guys. It is buried in the Bermuda Triangle depths of this engine, but it looks like this, and I believe you remove this from the bottom if you wanted to replace it, but I don't really recommend you replace it. If you can get away with this hack, definitely do it, and I'll list all the trouble codes that you may have uh, in the description box down below. That way you know if this hack is gonna work for you. Uh, so to do the hack, all you gotta do is take your little resistor, bridge the middle pin and the pin closest to the flat side of this connector, wrap it in tape, zip tie it away, put your engine covers back on, and that's it. Clear the code and you should have all of your boost pressure back. Now there are other cases uh, where you do need to do a little bit more work, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But if you guys watch my videos to save a lot of money on car repairs, and if you're down with a one penny hack like I am, then you are going to love today's video sponsor, Honey. Honey is a free shopping tool that automatically searches the internet for the best promo codes every time you buy something online. Installing Honey is really easy. Just go to joinhoney.com slash legitstreetcars, and with just two clicks of the mouse, one here and one here, you're ready to shop. The average user saves $30 a month because Honey works on over 30,000 online retail stores, including Amazon, eBay, Auto Parts, warehouse and tire rack. Here's me using Honey to find a new rack and pinion steering for my Turbo Trans Am. Originally the rack was $195 without the core charge and Honey saved me a whopping $38. That's about a 20% discount without doing a thing. There is literally no reason not to get Honey. It's totally free. It installs in just two clicks and you guys can get Honey by going to joinhoney.com slash legit streetcars. Now we are almost at the boost test ground so I'm going to hook up the scanner press record and we're gonna see how much boost pressure the car makes with the resistor mod all right guys data logger is connected wide open throttle there's no throttle <laughs> ESP kicked in a little bit and all right that should be a good enough amount of time in boost to see if we have full boost pressure with the resistor mod. So let's pull over and check out the scanner. Okay, so here's our data log. Check out engine RPM. Right when it hits about 2000, we're gonna be at full throttle. There we go. So now we're at full throttle. Look at boost pressure. 2100, 2300, 2100, 2000. So basically a good average is about 2200 millibar, which is about 17 PSI once you subtract out about a thousand millibar for atmospheric pressure. So we're right in line with factory spec. So not only do we have our boost back, but this car is as smooth as glass with the new engine mounts. We're not transmitting any vibration into the cabin of the car. And now that we have a properly installed control arm bushing, we're not bump steering all over the place. And if you think about it, we fixed three pretty big problems with this car for about $120 worth of parts and maybe two hours worth of labor, which is pretty awesome. So let's talk about the M55 inlet port shutoff motor and the system in which it controls. The intake manifold on the CDI has what's called swirl flaps. These are installed inside of the intake manifold and they're all connected with one common rail so they open and close together. Uh, so these flaps can open and close and they're all controlled by the M55 
55 inlet port shutoff motor. So all we're doing by adding a resistor to the connector for this motor is tricking the engine's computer into thinking that the motor is working perfectly fine. This way, it doesn't set a trouble code and put it into limp home mode. The CDI uses a variable vane turbocharger, so it can actually reduce the amount of boost pressure electronically if it detects a fault in the engine management system. Now this isn't the only engine to have a system like this, and the idea here is to swirl the air, is to create some turbulence at low engine RPM and low load in order to aid in efficiency. So this is gonna help with emissions and supposedly low end torque. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and agree with everybody online that has done the resistor mod or completely eliminated the swirl flaps altogether. And I'm gonna say that this has no adverse effect on the engine at all. Honestly, I don't think the system is really required and many people just delete the entire thing. I've been driving now for like eight, 900 miles with all of those flaps in the open position. My motor failed so that they're all stuck open. Uh, and I've started this when it was five degrees out. I'm still getting 40 MPG on the highway with a bad thermostat. Uh, and as you've seen, we've had all of our boost pressure restored as well. So I don't really see this need for the system. And if anything, it adds a lot of complexities uh, and can cost a lot of money to repair. So I got lucky that it was just the motor that was bad. But in some cases, the linkage can break off the motor and that's an easy fix as well. You just kind of jam the linkage forward, zip tie it to something and make sure that those flaps are fully open. But for some guys, you will get a carbon buildup in the intake that will actually cake up on the swirl flaps and reduce airflow into the engine and then you're gonna have a reduction in power. At that point, you gotta take the intake off completely, clean it out at the very least. Uh, and while you're in there, I would highly recommend just deleting the swirl flaps altogether, which I may do eventually, uh, especially because I wanna clean out the intake manifold anyway. Uh, so I think that this system can be deleted uh, with no adverse effects. I, like I said, I've been driving the car for quite some time now uh, with this modification done, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, if you've done this modification, if you've eliminated your swirl flaps, have you noticed any adverse effects? Or in my case, I actually feel like the car is a little bit quicker. I've driven other CDIs that have this system still functioning, and I think this one is a little bit faster. But let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about a one penny resistor mod that could potentially save you many hours of labor and a lot of money. Okay, so now that we have fully restored the boost on the CDI, there is only one thing left to do. That is increase the boost pressure. I mean, we can't be rolling around on stock boost. I mean, seriously, who does that? <laughs> so in the next video, we are gonna be installing a Race IQ performance tune to the CDI. Guys, this is gonna add more boost pressure. It's gonna increase our horsepower by about 30 and our torque by about 60. So I'm so excited to start modifying this CDI and I hope you guys are as well. In that next video, we're going to log again, see how much more boost the tune creates. We're also gonna try and test zero to 60 times Time to see if we've improved there. That is, of course, if it's not snowing. It is December in Chicago, so it, it might be snowing. With that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you all in the next video.